Hey Reef Builders, it's Remy and today we head back to Indianapolis to visit a system with all the bells and whistles. Seriously, Doug has thought of everything. If you missed my last tank tour, we were visiting Indianapolis and I officially made my announcement that I will be joining the Reef Builders team. I'm honored to be one of many to continue Jake's legacy and his vision, so I hope you'll come along. I won't waste any more time up front. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you know whenever we post new videos. Let's go. Well, we're in Indianapolis and we decided to come by our good friend Doug's house and see this amazing tank. This tank is awesome. Can you just tell me the dimensions really quick? The tank is 32 inches wide. It is 78 inches long. It's a peninsula style and it's 30 inches tall. Okay, and this is a planet aquarium? A planet aquariums. Looks like as far as fish go, you, you guys are uh, really into tangs. Yes, I wanted every fish I wanted. My goal was to have a, a utilitarian fish. So every fish has a purpose, uh, except for the clown and the uh, cardinals. Those are just fish that I like. Yeah. Um, but I bought all the tangs so that they would help eat the algae. I have two wrasses in there, a six line and a melanaris uh, for any kind of pests uh, to keep those under control. And a fox face, a lot of the fish I got from tank teardowns from other people. Um, so I've had seven tangs in this tank, roughly 300 gallons, and they're all big, fat, and healthy. So when I wanted, when I built this tank and designed it, I didn't want any kind of magnets on the outside of the front. So my original goal was to put the returns. So the returns are plumbed through the top, come down there on sea swirls. Each return has a separate return pump running to it. And then my goal was to mount the uh, tunes pumps below them. I 3D printed some brackets uh, to mount those on there. And then they would spin back and forth and I could pulse them to get flow on this side of the tank. On the other side of the tank, I have four MP40s. And so I did add recently in the last month, a uh, Tunes Wave Box to vary the flow again. Uh, just another different way of flow in there. And let's go up above. Uh, how are you lighting this beast? I do all three styles of lighting. Okay. I do uh, three 250 watt metal halides. It's a Hamilton fixture in the middle. Um, it also runs four ATI Blue Plus T5s. And then I've got four three foot Quanta bars they're the Mesa Blues. Okay. And those are my LEDs for a little bit of pop there. You want to take me in the bathroom? Sure. It's a weird request. <laughs> this is where the magic happens, right? <laughs> so in the bathroom, we had a door put in the house. Okay. And then we uh, plumbed the uh, plumbing, goes through the floor to a remote fish room in the basement. Oh. So basically, the underneath the stand is just for storage for the most part. Well, I guess that means uh, we gotta go downstairs, right? Yes. Wow. Well, I guess we gotta start somewhere. So uh, let's start right here at the sink. I mean, got your RODIs and all of that stuff, but this, this looks like the ultimate rinsing station, right? Yes. So in a fish room, the most useful tool is the sink itself. So I've, I've got a commercial uh, restaurant style sink here. I've got a uh, area here to work on stuff, rinse stuff off. I also put my saw up here to rinse everything off when I uh, frag corals. Um, I've got a commercial sprayer uh, to rinse off filter socks, to clean anything that needs cleaning. And in a fish room, things always need cleaning, always. Um, I've got the RODI that's set to the wall. I did this here so that when I unscrewed and changed all the filters, it's all sealed. The water just runs down into the sink, so there's no mess. Um, I've got it plumbed. I've got an auto top off that uh, container, a 55 gallon container that fills up automatically through the RO. And then the other line runs to the mixing station in the room behind us. You're running Apex stuff. So I do run Apex stuff, but I use it only for monitoring. I don't use it for a lot of control. Um, I've had the EB-832 go out and the head have issues. So I basically use it for monitoring. So I have one return pump plugged into it. The other one is to a separate circuit so that if, when the EB-832 went out, it didn't shut the tank off. It was redundancy. 
but I have my skimmer so I can control everything there. I have an auto water change with the dose there, which I dose, or I do auto water change to the main display. I dose three gallons of water into the quarantine tank, and then the quarantine tank is removed through another dose down the drain, three gallons. So the water in the main display is as close to similar to the, in the quarantine tank as possible. That's awesome. Um, this is pretty simple. I just got the, the board, the screen up there to monitor the parameters. I do also have a fan up here, exhaust fan, that goes to the box up here. So it keeps the air moving through the room and keeps removing it to the outside. So it keeps pulling air in and exhausting it out to keep the hum humidity under control. But as far as that, that's pretty simple. I did plumb everything down here so you can calibrate the dose when it needs to be with just a couple valves down there on the bottom. You are a big fan of UV. Yes. You have it on all of the tanks in the house, correct? I have it on all the tanks in the house and it runs 24 seven. All right, so you've got a couple large units right here. Yes, this is an 80 watt unit. I have it plumbed to one return pump. I have a manifold, so it runs water through the UV and that pump then is plumbed into the other pumps um, intake so that you're not recirculating through the sump, the same UV water. So then it goes to the other return pump is then pumped upstairs. So it's completely different water all the time. Okay. Um, and I've got the Trident up there. So I have my lines that run straight down into the sump in a waste container. I think the straighter they are, the more accurate it seems to be versus them being all tangled up and and bunched up. I mean, I think people watching will know and see just how clean everything is and you used a lot of channeling for that. Is that easy to access if you need to get into it? So I did everything um, in individual channels. So there's very few that have four or five lines through them. The toughest ones to manage, if you ever have to service one of the light fixtures, behind the frag tank, those are the most difficult ones. These ones here are fairly simple to pull the pull the cover off, service whatever you need to service, and then replace it back on there. I've done that several times with things. So the sump is, the upstairs tank is a planet tank. This is a tide line sump, which is uh, made by Planet Aquariums as well too, another company uh, that they own. It's the largest one they have. It's uh, six feet by 22 inches by I think uh, 20 inches tall or so. Is this like a hydroponics tray? Yes, this is from Pent Air. It's a three foot by eight foot fiberglass trough. I built just a wooden uh, stand around it. That's two by 12s. It's 12 inches deep, three foot wide and eight feet long. Um, I did that because I didn't want to have to worry about cleaning the sides of it as often. Uh, with glass and whatnot. So um, my original intent was just to fill the back foot area because it's difficult to reach with just live rock. Uh, but I found out I needed more space for mother colonies. As we do. Uh, yeah, so I, <laughs> I, I built a rack back there out of PVC and just uh, some frag or PVC plugs to mount the, the mother colonies to discs and uh, run those along the back there. And then I just have the front two feet, two feet by eight feet for uh, overstock from the tank upstairs and other frags that I grow and take to frag swaps. What lights do you have running above here? So this is another Hamilton fixture, same as the one that's upstairs. It's got two 250 watt metal halides in it with uh, T5s in it, four T5s. I've also got reef bright strips. I've got one here, a four foot one, another one there, four foot one on the back, and then I've got two six foot ones along the back. I got the halides because I wanted to match what I had upstairs. I had halides, I switched to halides six years ago, I believe. Uh, I got a used fixture, put it on there, and I had more growth than I've ever had before. So I wanted to keep that same fixture, and then I just found, ran across these used ones here and uh, decided to go ahead with those on the uh, frag tank as well. So another unique feature of this frag tank down here is you've got this, uh, this elevated refugium up here on the shelf. Yes. So the tank is upstairs and it's all plumbed through the wall and it feeds to the, there's a 50 gallon Rubbermaid tote up there, uh, which has a third of it cut off with live rock and the drain tube with the, the coarse mesh that goes across it. The other two thirds is all Kato. So that uh, helps to keep nutrients under control. It also uh, helps to keep pods alive. So it keeps pods in the whole system. 
You've got a couple systems over here, quarantine systems, which I feel like we should all be running. Are these all separate from each other then, right? So the tank upstairs is all plumbed through this uh, trough in the refugium. The quarantine tank is a 60 gallon cube. It is completely separate. The only connection to it is that when a water change is performed, an auto water change is performed, it is taking three gallons out of the, the main system and putting three gallons into the coral quarantine. And then the coral quarantine is getting three gallons removed to put down the drain. So it's completely separate, so you can't cross-contaminate uh, any kind of uh, pests with the main system because the waters never mix, but it's, it's Still close to the, the water. similar water as yeah. possible. That's a great idea. Yeah, this is for fish only in quarantine. <laughs> this is just a separate quarantine tank. Um, I had the tank originally, so I didn't have to buy it. So I just set up the acrylic tank, built a custom stand, and uh, I used that as my or fish quarantine for any new fish that I bring in. Sweet hexagon, man. Yeah. <laughs> or is that a it's, trapezoid? It's what dated. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect quarantine tank. And then I'm assuming that this is a coral quarantine, another one. This is a completely separate, it's not a quarantine tank per se. It's more of an emergency, something happened, uh, something's crashing in the main display. I need to save my prize pieces. Yeah. You have another separate system that's fully mature. You can put that a, a couple frags in there, or if you have a frag or a colony that's dying, you can take some frags out of there. You can move them around, put a, one in this tank over here, and try to save what you've got there. So something completely separate, so it's not affected by this, the whatever issue it's caused. Well, you've thought of everything. I mean, you, you've even got a TV down here, so you can hang out. Watch YouTube. <laughs> Watch some YouTube. So, and then you've got this little, uh, this little nano up here. This, what is this, five gallons? It's a five gallon uh, Evo tank. It was a tank that my son had in college. And uh, about every two months, I, because I have the nice sink, I completely drain it. Just put the live rock and everything in a bucket, completely drain it, rinse it all out, scrub it all down put it all back together, put brand new water in, put it back in, and within two hours, it looks crystal clear. Can you show us the water change? Yes, absolutely. Let's see how, let's see how you do these water changes. So in this back utility room, I do have two 105 gallon uh, containers, one for RODI, the other is for salt water. I do have them plumbed to run into a sediment filter um, so I do run whenever I mix the salt, I run it through the sediment filter. It runs basically through that constantly. It helps to minimize any of that sludge buildup. So over the course of several, two years now this has been running, it's only been cleaned. I mark it on my whiteboard on the container. I cleaned it on February 9th. It was the first time I cleaned it in two years. So it set up for two years. And the only thing I had was uh, flat chunks of clear look like salt maybe on the bottom. Yeah. And they were starting to flake up a little bit and block the, the bulkhead down there. So yeah, I, those things are such a pain in the butt to clean. Yeah. And you've got auto water changes over here going on? Yes, I've got, my wife has a tank upstairs that has an auto water change that uh, runs off the two Versa pumps over there. The third pump over is not currently being used. And the other one I use to dose Kalkwasser to my main display. All right, so explain this tank for us. So this is a Red Sea Reefer 170. Um, my tank, or my son wanted a uh, tank that was good size that he could uh, basically grow any kind of type of coral he wanted. Um, so this is just a super simple one. It's just running a protein skimmer, a simple two-part dose B-ionic. Um, it's just got flow and uh, yeah, there's, it's just the standard Red Sea Reefer 170. You've got one more tank to show us? One more tank, my All right, wife's let's tank. let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, the first ever reef tank on wheels. You guys just wheel this around the house? Is that what goes on or? We, uh, <laughs> we had carpet in this room originally. We decided to go with wood floors. And so the tank was already in here. Uh, so I put it on wheels to be able to roll it out. So we drained the water to about three inches, drained the sump, four of us picked it up, set it on wheels, rolled it out of the room. They put the floor in there. We rolled it back in. We haven't taken it off wheels yet because we want to paint the room. And the easy way to get to behind the tank is to just roll it out of the way again. So this is your wife's tank. She's very inspired, it looks like, by rock flower and enemies. 
Rock flowers and torches. Is torches, for the yeah. Blast those as well too. But this tank here is set up where it's like we showed downstairs on the Versa pumps. It is auto water change from the basement through the crawl space into the tank here. It's also got automatically where the top off will fill up up here. Um, it does. I do dose two part on this one. This one also does have a UV sterilizer. Other than that, it runs a protein skimmer. Um, sometimes bag in, a carbon in a bag, mm -hmm. but that's about it for this tank here. It's just been pretty spot on. She even has some Ghanis that struggled in my tank that she put in there that are starting to come back. So that's great. That's great. Well, Doug, thank you so much for taking us through your tank. I feel like you know <laughs> this video does not do any of this justice. I know you hear that a lot on on YouTubers' channels and whatnot, but. Uh, we could probably be here for another three days just going through <laughs> the amount of time and effort you put into thinking everything through. It just looks so good. So congratulations on a great tank. Thank you. I appreciate it. Huge thanks to Doug for showing us around his system. What an amazing system. That fish room, oh, so awesome. Also want to say a shout out to my reefing friend here in St. Louis. His name is Tyler. He goes by inland underscore reef on Instagram. He is responsible for all those buttery macro shots. As always, if you have any questions, make sure to put them down in the comment section below and make sure to like subscribe and hit that bell notification. So you know, when we post new videos, thank you for coming along. We'll see you in the next one.